Hi, welcome to Korean Fight GMAT. You are a DIY study guide for the GMAT. To get over 700 score in the GMAT, getting a decent score in verbal reasoning is a must. In fact, the verbal part is given more weight than the quant part when it comes to overall GMAT score because so many people are good at math and getting high score in verbal is a decisive differentiator. In this video, I will discuss an advanced technique in verbal that will help you to get a huge step towards 700 plus score in the GMAT coming up. As you do well in the actual GMAT exam, it is highly likely that you will get a difficult assumption question in the critical reasoning part. In fact, most of assumption type questions are difficult. But before we go further, how do you determine if a question is an assumption? Well, that part is quite easy. The question itself directly uses the word assumption. Some of the examples are, the argument above relies on which of the following assumptions. Which of the following is an assumption the argument requires? That is straightforward, right? And when you see an assumption question in critical reasoning, use a wonderful reasoning tool called the negation test. Negating a statement means making a statement ineffective or invalidating it. But it is not in terms of literal opposition, such as small and big or simply yes and no. Negating a statement is mainly about logical opposition. And thinking about how to oppose it logically takes some time to practice. How do you use this negating test in CR or something questions? The basic rule is negate a statement or assumption. And if the assumption or the conclusion is damaged much, that assumption is the right answer we are looking for. In other words, in every assumption question, a required assumption must be an essential part of the conclusion in the argument provided. Because a correct assumption must be a part of the argument if you negate it or make it logically opposite. The original assumption and the conclusion of the argument must be damaged to a degree that conclusion itself is invalid. But what if a negated statement did not damage the assumption or conclusion? Then it means that assumption was not good in the first place and was not required. In this case, you can safely eliminate that option. This negation touch tool is powerful because you can either eliminate or select an answer choice with confidence. Now here's the first part of using the negating text technique. Memorize the logical opposite for certain keywords. At this stage, don't focus on matching the negation. Just memorize the logical opposite groups to get used to it. And practice assumption questions in the critical reasoning part of the GMAT official guidebooks using this table of lists. Usually, assumptions are indicated by qualifying words such as all, none, some, only, never, and so on. Now what is the logical opposite of these words? The logical opposite the opposite of all is not all. All means 100% and not all means 0 to 99%. The logical opposite of some is none. Some means at least 1 and none means 0. The logical opposite of only is not only. The logical opposite of never is sometimes. The logical opposite of most is half or less. Most means majority or at least greater than 50%. So most covers 51% inclusive to 100%. You don't say most for a case where there are only half of people applicable. Most should be more than half. Therefore, the logical opposite of most is not more than 50%. Okay, moving on. The logical opposite of significant is insignificant. The logical opposite of everywhere is not everywhere. And the logical opposite of any is not every or some. This list is not exhaustive, but covers most of qualifying words in the GMAT assumption questions. Now here comes another tip. Sometimes you won't see a qualifying word at all. How can you negate a statement in this case? You negate the main verb. For example, the assumption of people would watch the movie if it was easily accessible can be negated by making a logical opposite of the primary verb. The negated version is people would not watch the movie if it was easily accessible. And there may be a rare case where you are not even sure how to negate a statement. In this case, move on to the next answer choice quickly and negate the next assumption. Because we can choose an answer choice confidently with the negation test, if we can find one statement that cripples the conclusion or assumption, that option is a strong contender for the right answer. Don't forget to manage your time in the GMAT. But simply applying the logical opposite does not make an assumption automatically negated. You need to make the sentence itself completely logically opposite. That's why you need the next step. 
Let's see if you can quickly come up with the logical opposite of each statement I'm going to read. There can be more than one correct answer. None of people are going to see the movie. The logical opposite of this assumption is some people are going to see the movie. Or at least one person is going to see the movie. The expression at least one person has the same meaning as some. So this expression is logically opposite to none of people. What about the negated statement? Not all people are not going to see the movie. Is it correctly negated? Yes, Yes, it is. The original assumption statement none of people are going to see the movie means zero person is going to see the movie. But if you say not all, it means excluding all. So not all is between zero and 99% and includes zero percent. So you can say that not all includes none factor of zero person. Because not all includes zero person factor, adding an adverb not to the main verb going to see will negate the statement. If you find this concept confusing, just focus on memorizing the logical opposite groups of quality words. I gave this example to illustrate that you already need to approach the negation text method from reasoning perspective, not merely memorizing it. What about this expression? Most people bought pizza. The logical opposite of this assumption is half or less people bought pizza. Or it could be half or more people did not buy pizza. Because most people covered 51 to 100% of people, the correct negation would be 0 to 50% of people bought pizza. Or you could say that 50 to 100% did not buy pizza. But what about most people did not buy pizza? Is this the correct negation of the assumption? No, it is not. This is wrong. I know you are thinking, this is so confusing, what the but bear with me, hear my explanation. Moat includes 51 to 100%, right? There are two ways to negate moat. One, you say 0 to 50% bought pizza. In this case, you negate the qualifying word moat. Because moat includes 51 to 100%, the opposite of moat is 0 to 50%. Or two, you say 50 to 100% it did not buy pizza. In this case, you negate the main verb bought pizza. Because 50% means exactly half. Maximum of 49% did not buy pizza in the original statement. That is why you need to include 50% to negate the main verb. If you don't understand this concept, don't worry, just memorize the procedure of negating the qualifying word most. Logically opposite word of most is larger than half people, or 0 to 49% people. Logically opposite verb involving the qualifying word most is 50% to 100%. Never ever say most with the logically opposite main verb. Until you become familiar with this concept, get along with this simplified memorization version. So, to make an assumption logically opposite, you either negate the qualifying word with the same main verb, or use the same qualifying word that negated main verb. That's it for the negating touch procedure. Now, let's try the negating touch method by solving a Gmail level problem. Pause the video and try to solve this question. Okay, I'll read the question. Henry Potter, in a study, it was found that Gryffindor Hotel. <laughs> you need a sorting hat to enter the hotel. Gryffindor Hotel needs at least 30% occupancy rate, which is the rate of number of rooms filled in a hotel, to break even and prevent financial loss. To maintain the marginal profit, Gryffindor Hotel needs to increase its occupancy rate at least 1% every year because of various economic factors such as inflation rate and maintenance costs. Therefore, the hotel should increase funding for advertisement to improve the profit. Which of the following is an assumption on which the argument depends? Before moving on to reading the answer choices, find the conclusion of the argument first. The conclusion is stated at the last part of the passage. The hotel should increase funding for advertisement to improve the profit. Now let us read the options. Option A. Increasing the occupancy rate is more crucial than increasing the number of VIP customers. This statement is out of scope because we cannot find the keyword VIP customers in the passage. Because we are to establish an assumption from the argument in the passage, the correct answer should be able to back up from the passage. A is irrelevant, so eliminate it. Option B. Past funding for advertisement helped increasing the occupancy rate of the hotel by 1% annually. It is a good thing that the past funding for advertisement helped increasing the occupancy rate by 1% every year. But we cannot decide if this assumption will produce the future funding leading to the rise of the occupancy rate by 1% every year. Because we are looking for the assumption that depends on the argument in the passage, we simply cannot decide based on the past data. Whether the past funding was sufficient, it does not affect the argument of increasing the funding. Eliminate B. 
Option C, increasing funding for advertisement to improve the profit would help increasing the rate of number of rooms filled in the hotel beyond 30%. This statement looks good. We can find in the beginning of the passage that Griffin or Hotel needs at least 30% of occupancy rate to break even. And because increasing funding for advertisement will help booting the occupancy rate beyond 30%, this assumption strengthens the conclusion of argument. To confirm if this is the answer, let's negate this statement. Increasing funding for advertisement to improve the profit would not help increasing the rate of number of rooms filled in the hotel beyond 30%. Ouch! This statement seriously damaged the conclusion in the passage. If increasing funding for advertisement damaged increasing the occupancy rate beyond 30%, clearly it is not profitable. Therefore, see the correct answer. We found the right answer, but let me explain the errors of option D and E. Option D, in the near future, the occupancy rate of 30% is not enough to prevent the financial loss. This statement poses several problems. First of all, the future consequence is not the point of discussion here, so that's one problem. And secondly, the fact that occupancy rate of 30% is not enough to prevent the financial loss is directly opposite to Henry Potter's first argument stated at the start of the passage. Thus, we cannot say option this statement is an assumption on which Henry Potter's argument depends. Eliminate D. Option E, the inflation rate and maintenance costs are nearly equal to the sales of 30% occupancy rate of the hotel. Although many of the terms in statement of E can be found in the passage, this assumption is making a random connection from the argument provided in the passage. We cannot decide how much the inflation rate and maintenance costs are. Option E's statement is a groundless claim and can be eliminated. We are left with option C and C is the final answer. Please keep in mind that you definitely need some time to practice negating assumptions. This skill will be very, very helpful when you encounter a difficult assumption type question in the critical reasoning. If you master it, you are surely one step closer to getting over 700 plus score in the GMAT. Now if you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to this amazing channel. Good luck with your journey for the high score in the GMAT.